Welcome to Interesting Choices, a podcast where we look at media, books, movies, video games, all sorts of things that make interesting choices. I'm one of your hosts, Kate. And I'm Sky. Hello, Sky. Hi, Kate. What are we talking about this week? Uh, this week, we are talking about the 1993 motion picture, Nights. <laughs> Um, it has such a generic title. It's very difficult to find. I do not think it was ever released on anything other than VHS. It does not appear to be that way. No, I managed to find a copy of it on DVD through some, I'm not entirely sure if they're reputable. It just seems like someone ripped the VHS tape and then threw (laughs) it on like a DVD maker thing. So good luck trying to find it. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Got a running time of 90 minutes for once. <laughs> it was uh, directed by Albert Pune. Yep. He's uh, famous or infamous. Yeah. Honestly, having seen The Warrior and the Sorceress, this movie is like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it got close to that a couple times, but it was never as boring. I mean,. Like, there were some bad lines, but, you know, they made me laugh at the very least. Yeah, the the ham-fisted acting was fun, ham-fisted acting, and um, the action scenes at least were legible and entertaining in a lot of ways. Pretty darn fun in a lot of places, actually. And Mm -hmm. I mean, really, just the ham-fistedness, the sheer enthusiasm a lot of people brought to it was uh, kind of a joy to behold. Yeah. um, That being said, this is not a good movie. (laughs) It's not a good movie, but it's not... It's not a, like, slog to get through. It's a a movie that you can put on with some friends and just enjoy it. And... Oh, yeah. um, It's... If you look at the cover, (laughs) any of the covers, (laughs) it's this very muscle-bound woman... Uh, this blonde woman with a sword or a spear or something, and then Chris Christopherson hanging out in the background, and somewhere is a very, very embarrassed-looking Lance Hendrickson wearing this, uh, like, cyber arm and, uh, like, a hood thing. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you first mentioned this movie to me, the, I believe the first words out of your mouth were uh, Lance Henriksen and Vampire Slab Works, and I was on board immediately. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... Well, you look at it and you're like, oh, this is a movie from 93, so probably, you know, they got a big-name actor in Chris Christopherson, who at this point is way too old to be doing this role anyway, but whatever, they got him, so you're like, <laughs> oh, he's going to be the hero, and he's going to be the one that... No, actually, this is like a hero's journey story about the main lady Nea. Or yeah Nia. played by uh world champion kickboxer kathy long yeah and the mma fighter like she rules um she, yeah she's I, I think i remember looking up her record she's pretty much undefeated in her whole career yeah uh i think she was also the first woman commentator for like the ufc or something um She's she's had an illustrious career, and uh, she's pretty okay. Her acting is not yeah. amazing in this movie, <laughs> but like her as good as she is at fighting is it, uh, as bad as she is at acting. <laughs> yeah, like to to be fair, no one's really pulling in top marks for acting in this movie. <laughs> That's true. I mean, even Lance Henriksen. I mean, he goes for it a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> it not really clear in what direction, but he goes there. <laughs> Every every single choice that Lance Hendrickson makes is the most amazing one that he possibly could make. Like, yeah. he spends half the movie making out with a parrot, spitting up water, and like making these like weird quotes. I don't know how they made his big robot arm. It's like a really huge, like two or three times the size of his regular arm, and then on the end, it just ends in a flat surface with like a. A scorpion tail type thing that is much too small for the end. And it looks like he just has fun every time he manipulates it. (laughs) He's just staring at it, whipping it around, splashing water with it. (laughs) It's really good. If you've ever been a kid whose parents have taken you to, like, 
the seaside and you go into one of those gift shops and you have they sell those like little claw things with the shark head or the like <laughs> alligator head and you pull the trigger and it goes rawr, rawr, rawr. um that's basically what he's doing this entire film and it's <laughs> glorious <laughs> it's pretty great um yeah supposedly this is a sequel to Albert Pune's 1989 film, Cyborg. I haven't seen that, so I don't know how well these two mesh. I feel like not at all. Yeah, I don't think they mesh at all. I think because uh, Cyborg was starring... Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, Van Damme. Yeah, which itself has its own wacky story in that it was supposed to be... They were going to use the props and sets from that to make the sequel to Masters of the Universe, which bombed. Um, and then they had them and like, screw it, we'll just make a different movie. And then Cyborg was made. And then, I mean, this really feels like, because it's not called Cyborg 2. That's not an alternate title. It just says it's a sequel. So, And there are legitimate sequels to Cyborg, including Cyborg 2, <laughs> starring Angelina <laughs> Jolie, and Cyborg 3, uh, colon the Recycler, uh, who is not starring anyone that I can name. Oh, no, 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 no. Back that up. Cyborg 3, starring Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, there he is. That is Malcolm McDowell-iest. So... I don't know where this movie fits in the whole um, cinematic universe, but like, God bless. So it looks like it might fit in between two and three, or at least somewhere around three, because three is the only one that mentions a, po- a post-apocalypse and Cy Town or Cyborg Town, which they do mention in Nights. Uh, yeah, but in Nights they call it Cyborg City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they only mention it like in the last... 15 minutes of the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah god that ending they were really banking on there being another movie you you start watching this movie and you're like okay villagers get attacked in a flashback young girl and her brother have to flee parents get killed by like vampire cyborgs cool cool yeah and then you're like okay girls older now living with the village they get attacked by cyborgs okay Chris Christopherson comes in and he's a cyborg. Well, it's not clear at first, except for the fact that like he just bodies several people just by touching them. It's not like a mystery. He's like, nope, I'm a cyborg. (laughs) Hello. Oh, yeah. There's a big, long standoff between uh, him and another one. I think that one had a name. I don't remember it, though. They They have a big, long talk about how the vampire cyborgs have surpassed their, uh, their power cell limits by draining blood and how his name Kane is Chris Christopherson's cyborg. Uh, he's Gabriel. Gabriel. Thinking of something else. Yeah, it's really hard because they all have d- biblical names. Yeah. Simon. Simple Simon. Uh, <laughs> the guy with the Simon. silver nose. <laughs> right. He gets hit in the nose and then uh, like this oil is dripping down his face and I just could not not laugh at him throughout the rest of that scene apparently in and these cyborgs have a very specific spot in their head where if you stab them they shut down immediately Mm -hmm. and one of them gets stabbed in the head later and the spot is missed so he's just like barfing out oil (laughs) saying you missed my spot (laughs) this movie's kind of like equal parts mega man and terminator (laughs) where like all the robots went bad uh except for this one robot that was created by the creator of the robots to kill all of the uh, all of the other robots. Gabriel is Rockman himself. <laughs> Job is the leader. Job is uh, Lance Henriksen's uh, character is the leader of the vampire cyborgs, and they're all wearing like various kinds of robes and veils that they take off when they're about to fight. Yeah, they're like weirdly um, orientalist. <laughs> let's say. Yeah. Like, they're not from any specific culture or region. I think it's just, like, meant to invoke somewhere in the Middle East or, you know, South Asia or something. There is a distressing amount of brown face in this as well. Yeah. It was done pretty poorly, too, to the point where I'm not sure that they weren't just painting their faces for some reason like maybe for camouflage but i could see being being the other way too yeah the vampires have humans that they have uh, had sworn have 
not enslaved, but um, they've sworn loyalty to the cyborgs in uh, in exchange for not being killed and for hunting other humans. Yeah, uh, the, the cyborgs can only subsist off of fresh human blood and so they need people to go out and capture humans for them and these humans are so bad at the job (laughs) really bad at it It, to the point where you're like wouldn't it just be more effective if the cyborgs just ate the humans in their army and then just went out and did the job themselves yeah it's like they go into a raid on a village and they all have swords and bows and arrows i think one guy had a club i was like Mm -hmm. okay that guy's being smart about it (laughs) but They specifically say, don't dr- spill any drops of this precious, fresh human blood, but don't, <laughs> like, smash cut later. All the villagers are dead on the ground bleeding. <laughs> yeah. At first, I thought Simon was shouting because he was angry, but the way he talks the rest of that scene, I think that's just his, the way he talks. All of the cyborgs in this are in one of two camps. They're either silent, stoic, and useless, or utterly unhinged and screaming nonsense all the time (laughs) and if you're a named cyborg you get to be in the latter camp uh that's simon and job and maybe one other yeah well gabriel doesn't shout there's a very long standoff between uh gabriel and simon uh gabriel eventually comes out on top throwing a knife into simon's head they have a a really long sword fight where they're jumping off the side of a cliff it's not bad. There's like a helicopter shot of showing them on a smaller separated area on the cliff face. Mm-hmm. This is all in like the American Southwest. It's all mesas and plateaus and red rock. And Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like I think canonically this all takes place around there because um, all the cyborgs are trying to head to Taos in order to like capture a thousand humans for their <laughs> evil master builder leader who (laughs) talks to them through this like weird spinning tube yeah i don't even know like a cut down wiffle bat with aluminum foil around it yeah it's it's pretty good but uh, that is that is the main reason the cyborgs are on the move is they need to capture enough of these humans in order to take them to um, to the master builder and, and so he can enact his grand strategy of question mark yeah i wasn't super clear on what the the end game for that was and it also sounded like there was another army of cyborgs waiting for them at taos that they were supposed to meet up and then take over the rest of the continent i guess yeah i think he was supposed to use that blood to build more cyborgs or something uh having watched through to the end i think it was definitely just set up for a sequel or a series of films that never got made <laughs> yeah for obvious reasons <laughs> yeah kathy long's uh nia is just like uh, she gets shot in the arm after like trying to fight off some of these um human cyborg uh army sympathizers i guess collaborators that's the word collaborators yeah so she can actually fight some of them but she doesn't know how to fight cyborgs because cyborgs are not easy to wound uh using the same methods i think she manages to like stab one in the leg and it just like bats her away because that's not a cyborg's weak spot yeah uh simon gets his eye he gets stabbed in the eye which he then pulls out and replaces with a different one and he's fine pretty much it's yeah. like a minor annoyance. Um, Until Chris Christopher just like <laughs> stabs him in the head with a knife. Yeah, hits him in the kill spot. <laughs> and Nia's like shocked by all this. She's like watching it wide eyed, seeing Chris Christopher just like wade through uh, all of these cyborgs. You know, she's the sole survivor of this raid, basically. Yeah, so she basically uh, asks to be apprenticed to Chris Christopher to learn the cyborg killing ways. And in exchange, she'll show him the shortcut to Taos because the cyborg army will take five weeks to get there and he can head them off and get there in four weeks. (laughs) Not a lot of lead time, but and then we get a very long, uh, almost maybe like a third of the runtime training montage Mm-hmm. where it's not really clear exactly what she's learning i think there was at one point where he he keeps shouting i taught you the crimean defense now use it but 
it's not in reference to a particular move. It's just something he says. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like hand to hand combat in this where the combatants will be like, oh, you've used this technique and I've countered it with this technique. But there's no sense of what any of these techniques are. They just look like <laughs> normal punches and kicks or sword swipes or, you know, moving around. <laughs> mm hmm. Nothing means anything. No, uh, basically the her training ends when um her wounded leg heals and she can kick a stump. Good. Yeah, that's pretty much that it. Was... <laughs> then I think she tries to convince him to keep her around after he d fulfills his mission, so they can hang out and be friendos. Yeah, because um, he, as a good cyborg, he's not able to extend his life using human blood. The reason the cyborgs went bad in the first place is because, much like replicants, they had a built-in expiration date. And someone, the master builder, figured out a way to extend that life by giving them the ability to consume human blood and run off of that. Master Builder, who is separate from the Great Creator. Yes, the Great Creator is the one who created all of the cyborgs in the first place he's the he's the dr light whose name is gabriel and then in this analogy the master builder would be dr wiley yes and then the gabriel that we follow was named after the uh the great creator mm -hmm. just so things aren't confusing enough if you understand it in Mega Man terms it's a lot easier <laughs> it'd be like if dr light named Mega Man dr light instead of Mega Man. <laughs> Yeah. During the training montage, there's also a little, there's an uh, exposition dump of the current state of things, the blood drinking, great creator, all of this nonsense. And you get the sense that like the humans in the world don't understand any of this. <laughs> they Because they straight up call all of these cyborgs demons. And yeah. some people just don't believe in them. Yeah, and it's not really clear how the world got to this state. It kind of sounds like maybe the cyborgs were created and then there was an uprising Terminator style, but we don't get flashbacks of it and it's not really talked about. I think maybe the Van Damme movie addresses it, but I'm not willing to go back and find out. <laughs> Two didn't seem to. This might take place after three. I don't know. Yeah, one says there was a plague and it's post-apocalyptic, but then two seems to take place in a world that isn't post-apocalyptic, and then three is we're back in the post-apocalypse, so. Yeah, in two, it's 2074, and it's kind of like uh, almost cyberpunky, I guess. It's it's all about corporate corporations and corporate espionage, and like these people have sort of lost enough civilization in this film to forget how to make houses everyone just lives in the worst like ramshackle the poorly built tents <laughs> yeah ever um yeah two looks like it was released the same year as this three came out the year after yeah i i feel like this is like a weird gaiden side story thing um where it's like well, what if our cyborgs became horse-mounted cyborgs because that's cool started affecting knights templar but evil yeah or eviler i don't know i think the only reason this movie is called knights is because there are horses in it it makes sense i don't know it could be that this was the sequel that albert pune wanted to make because the other two don't seem to have been directed or written by him mm -hmm. so this could have been his sequel to cyborg as opposed to the canon sequel if you can call them that. <laughs> Maybe there's some super interesting lost oral history to this film, but uh, whatever. <laughs> At some point towards the end of their training, yeah, they, they get jumped by a bunch of cyborgs. They have a falling out because uh, Gabriel doesn't want her to follow him around and she wants to be friends. So they she runs away in a huff and then they get attacked. And it's not a bad fight in uh, like a foresty area. But then Gabriel gets blown the fuck up. Yeah. Which came out of left field. Yeah. And that's where you realize, oh, shit, this movie isn't about him. Like, <laughs> it's 100 percent not about him at all. Before he gets blown up, uh, he manages to take out a bunch of these cyborgs, but there's still a, a couple left. And he kicks the arm off of one somehow, yeah. which is pretty dope. And the cyborg who loses his arm ends up like going to look for it. And it's rolled by Nia's feet. And she's hiding 
uh, with a knife. She, you know, is still unsure about her combat capabilities, even after all this training. But Mm -hmm. uh, she gets her first cyborg kill. And I actually really liked that sequence because it showed her, like, making that, that jump from student to, like, journeyman, basically. Yeah. She goes from, I don't know if I can do this, to, I definitely know I can do this in one forehead stabbing. <laughs> yeah, and then she, she manages to, like, fight a bunch of them and then gets captured. Yeah, she does really well right up until she's captured. Yeah, just one of the the enemy cyborgs. And then also Job has one later, just has a wrist-mounted rocket launcher. Yeah, that's what I think that's what they use to blow up um, Chris Christopherson. Yeah, uh, it's the... He was like sort of squaring off with a blonde guy and he just up and rocket launchers him real good. <laughs> Which feels like cheating in this world, honestly. <laughs> Everyone else yeah. has like bows and swords and you straight up have like explosive weapons. Yeah, and there's not even a lot of bows. It's mostly everyone with just, like, bowie knives and machetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then they're like, oh, it looks like we hit his power core. So that's why he blew up. And then, yeah, his legs get blown clean off. He's just a torso at that point. Yeah, they they see see 3PO on an Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. Uh, Put him in a sack and hang him off a horse. They, They run off and they... They take Chris Christopherson's corpse, in finger quotes, um, yeah. with them. And Nia is captured. She's tied up, arms and legs. Oh, yeah. They leave her with some other people. Yeah, with some other humans that they've captured. And they're like, oh, we're going to take you to our commander and we'll do some stuff. Yeah. And then uh, some of the collaborators try to get handsy with Nia. And uh, she wrecks shop. Yeah. Thoroughly. Yeah, she straight up just like just murders a lot of mans and it's cool because this is this is the beginning of her arc in this straight like barbarian death whirlwind town. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're coming at her and she takes one out, takes the knife, just cuts her feet apart, and then she just bodies the rest with her hands bound. Yeah. It's really cool. And uh she frees the other people, she sends them off, she grabs a horse i guess i think she takes some of their clothes too to try to blend in uh, i don't remember i can only remember in that weird outfit she's got where she's got like two tank tops and two or three different pairs of jean shorts on. yeah that's that's what she wears for most of the movie but i think she infiltrates the camp by taking one of these collaborators clothes not like mm-hmm. the full hood thing which would make sense but just like his cut off <laughs> tank top thing in his pants. Yeah. But yeah, it's Nia to the rescue. She goes and tracks the cyborgs back to their base uh, where they are having some sort of like arena battle. Yeah, there's like a, a big jacked guy and I guess they're going to let him into the club if he fights good enough. He has a big speech about how he can become one of the 20 or something. Yeah, I never really understood what that meant because they never make it clear whether these cyborgs are actual cyborgs or if they're just robots. Yeah, and it's made even less clear because they use cyborg and robot interchangeably throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. And it seems like none of them actually have any organic parts unless it's like Again, Terminator style, whether uh, metal skeletons wearing a meat suit. Mm-hmm. But none of the cyborgs actually bleed, so who knows? Yeah, I feel like if they actually were robocopped into their existences, there should be some sort of discussion about, like, who who you used to be, who what your <laughs> past was. Like, But there's none yeah. of that. It's <laughs> basically Chris Christopherson is a giant old looking baby. <laughs> In this movie. Yeah. Like in his very best uh, generic wasteland wanderer getup. Yeah. It has to be appropriately loose and baggy and recognizable from a distance to have all the stuntmen do the right stunts <laughs> vaguely in a Chris Christopherson shape. They do not look like him in the slightest. They look great. They just don't look like him. <laughs> no. But like, um, Kathy Long, I think, does pretty much all of her own stunts. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me in the least bit um she does really well 
like I noted it a couple times before I looked her up that you know, this person's had some kind of training. And and they make full use of that. They go to efforts to show her in closer shots doing action, even at one point just like straight up <laughs> flying jump kicking a guy off of a horse. Oh god, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which was pretty cool. Oh, I forgot. I completely forgot to mention my favorite one in the whole movie. Oh, which one? There's so many of them. I know. It's it's the one that made me cackle at 11 at night when my neighbors were sleeping. <laughs> was, it, was it the one about the black parrot? No, it was when Simon and Gabriel were facing off, and then Gabriel says he's going to kill Simon. And Simon was like, oh, you were programmed with a lot of confidence chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> like, the dialogue in this movie is so amazing and <laughs> ridiculous that you can't be mad at it. Yeah. It's bad, but it's fun. Yeah, it is fun bad. It's the best kind of bad. <laughs> so, Nia's great plan is just, like, wade into this group of collaborators and just, like, yeah. push people out of the way so that she can challenge the champion and she's like what about me can i challenge this guy and all the cyborgs are like what are you doing <laughs> and job is he's sitting there just chewing scenery in the worst way this is i think where he's like dribbling water out of his mouth and like he does it several times and i don't know why he does it but it's like they gave him like a glass of water before the take and it's just like just let it go just <laughs> just go for it yeah it's a wild choice but one of his um underlings is like that's the girl we told you about the one that like killed all the cyborgs <laughs> And so he's like, you know what? Let her fight. This will be cool. Normally when villains do this sort of thing, it's because they feel like they're in control. They have a plan that they are untouchable. But like Job just sees me doing it just to fuck around. <laughs> just for funsies. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They throw down. Before they actually get into the fight, she goes back to her uh, like little green room tent. <laughs> Uh, where she's being attended by a young boy who the audience is supposed to recognize that he has the same scar as the the baby that she rescued in the beginning, who's her younger brother, but she doesn't know this yet. Yeah, and then they do a flashback later when she does notice it, and I don't remember that part happening earlier in the movie. This kid is very excited to learn how to kill cyborgs. Basically, yeah. every single human in this is like jazzed to fight and kill cyborg in a way that like i've never seen oppressed people be so jazzed to just throw their lives away <laughs> he's like i want you to train me to kill cyborgs and she's like mm, well show me where the cyborgs keep all of their loot and point point out the tent to me while i'm in the fight and then I'll meet you over there, and then we'll figure some stuff out afterward. Um, and so they go to the fight. And it's just, there's no fenced-off area. There's no rock pit. It's just a circle of people at the bottom of a cliff with two <laughs> people in the middle. Yeah, they have wrapped up knuckles with, like, blades sticking out of them, kind of like, <laughs> almost like low-rent Wolverine style. MacGyver Wolverine. Uh-huh. And, yeah, so she fights this big guy, and she, like handily dispatches him yeah she breaks his arm and shoulder and then bends his arm around and stabs himself with his own blade. <laughs> yeah she she is merciless like i don't know yeah. what kind of training they did in that like month but she goes from like not being able to do <laughs> almost anything to being the best fighter in the wastelands yeah she went through the murder machine boot camp <laughs> and at that point I think they just start throwing mans at her. <laughs> Some people rush her and she dismantles them. And then she just sort of has like, anyone else wants some, huh? Who wants a slice? Who wants a ha slice of butt kicking? And they all just sort of scatter. And eventually she makes it over to the tent where she finds Chris Christopherson's half body. Uh, but he's still alive. <laughs> yep. They have a nice little reunion, and... They mention the Crimean defense again. <laughs> yeah, somehow. 
she picks up his torso, straps it to her back, and he's like, give me a blade. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, they do the kind of like master blaster thing, I guess. It's like if someone had given C three PO a gun in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, and while they're running away, they they did the effect by strapping a little person <laughs> to her back and then dressing him up like Chris Christopherson. I was wondering how they did that because it actually didn't look half bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was just like a little person or um, someone without legs. I'm not entirely sure. There's a whole fight sequence with them strapped together, and it's not terrible. No, again, like, I was expecting the worst when it comes to fight sequences, but these are entertaining, they're fun, they do clever things. Um, There's a lot of limbs being chopped off. (laughs) Like, way more than I would have thought into this. Like, most of the money seems like it went to prosthetics and costumes. Yeah, they they all look good. She manages to dismantle a bunch of these cyborgs. Um, One who, like, I guess gets blown in half. She kills him and he's like, put me down over there. I'll use his legs. Then he one arm crawls his way over and then proceeds to one arm hack him in half. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And um, he has, like, I guess weird autonomous tubing in him that will help him self-repair by using other cyborgs parts um yeah he attaches himself to the legs it's a pretty decent effect Mm -hmm. it was almost surprising how good it looked i mean it was just a bunch of tubes that were cut apart then when somebody like off screen wiggled one of the tubes closer to the other one but like but they tried it yeah it could have been a lot cheaper looking (laughs) yeah It, it feels like the sort of thing that like If they were really trying to do it right, they would have filmed something in reverse and then reversed it um, to show the connections. But like, whatever, I'm fine with it. It it was nothing really connects to each other. Just some tubes wiggling at each other. And then suddenly he's standing up with like a a cyborg pot belly. Yeah. At some point in this whole fracas, she (laughs) she manages to like shoot Job with flaming arrows that she like made. Um, yeah, she just whips up some flaming arrows, uh, Far Cry style, and they don't seem to do much, but it's still kind of a dope moment. Cause she just bullseyes him right in the stomach. Yeah, well, it causes him to tumble off the cliffside to right. get him down to fighting level. And he, like, barely seems interested in fighting, to be honest. Yeah, he's just kind of stumbling around with arrows sticking out of him. At one point, there were three arrows for some reason uh, sticking out of him, uh, monologuing. And this whole time, there's like a, a mysterious uh, person in kind of black armor that shows up intermittently. He's kind of around. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he belongs in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he seems like he belongs in a better movie. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like almost mm, like fighter pilot type like helmet thing it doesn't have the like garbage cyborg look that all of the rest of the characters in this do apparently that's the master builder Mm -hmm. someone mentions it's him and then the wiki also confirms that that was in fact him they're cleaning up the rest of the cyborgs the villagers are free and are running around and so at some point nia reunites with the young boy and she recognizes oh you're my brother but you need to, like, get these villagers to safety. So, like, go and, and take these villagers to safety, take care of them, and I'll come back for you. Yeah. And it was kind of at that moment they realized something was weird with the timeline because um, there's the her running away with her baby brother away from the villagers. And then it cuts to a time jump forward. And she's like, 10 years later, she couldn't have been more than, like, five or six in that flashback. So now she's 16. I, yeah, I think canonically in this, she's like l- late teens, um, even though Kathy Long herself was far older than that. She was born in 64, so she was 39 when this was filmed. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which, I mean, she doesn't look too bad for it. I would have guessed late 20s, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if it weren't for the white girl dreads she has throughout the whole movie. Is she, she's 29, right? 63? Yeah, 64. Sorry. Yeah, 29. So I was right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Her character is very childish, uh, at least at the beginning. And and the way that she 
approaches things, uh, the way that she's begging Gabriel to teach her stuff. And, and even though she's not a good actress, I think she conveys the like youthfulness of the character decently well. Yeah. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Yeah. And that dissonance didn't really hit me until she has her flashback. And then I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I was willing to accept that she was like old playing young. Whatever. I'm fine with that. Like she and Gabriel are fighting all these guys and a villager runs up and says, oh, no, they've the master builder has taken your brother. We don't see it happen. It's just sort of conveyed. Mm -hmm. We do see him on a horse riding away with the kid and they're going to Cyborg City. <laughs> yep for some reason and so she she freaks out and this is where she jump kicks a man off of his horse um <laughs> but before she can do that uh job comes up and she fights him for a little bit and gabriel's like no i'll handle him you go get your brother she <laughs> she kicks that guy off the horse uh and then she rides off to go find <laughs> And in the most completely bonkers scene of the entire movie, just the bizarrest narration over her riding away. Like, yeah. And the music is this like weird, like chill piano music <laughs> where she's just like riding. You see her brother. And the master builder, like, on a cliffside, and he's <laughs> loading the child onto a hang glider. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot about the hang glider. <laughs> and just as she gets there, the hang glider takes off. And you're like, oh, man. what the fuck? They have a hang glider? Where did that come from? How did it get up there? It basically seems like this dude came from an entirely different movie. <laughs> to kidnap a child. Yeah, just to kidnap the child. And if they went with that, I would be 100% here for it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish they would have made more sequels because then she goes like, the search for my brother would take us to the furthest reaches of this universe and other universes. Yeah, of time and space. Space. <laughs> It's <laughs> wild. And then what does that even mean? I don't know because we'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. But um like Job and Gabriel are fighting each other while she's like running off and Job's like, "Oh yeah, uh by the way, there's like a bazillion cyborgs. You can stop me, but there's like going to be a bunch more." And then Gabriel just like just kills him. Yep. Yeah, they don't call it Cyborg City because it's full of hot dog vendors. Yeah, and then Job, his half of his face explodes, and he's just got like a burned face and an eyeball hanging out, and he's like lying on the ground in this puddle, and he says the most beautiful line ever. He says, um, I never experienced the pain of childbirth. And, and something about like death comes on wings like a black parrot. <laughs> it's wild. It it is so nonsensical, and then he just <laughs> ah, just dies, <laughs> and then the movie more or less is over. Like it's just yeah. like it's Nia riding away on a horse, and there's narration, and then credits. Yeah, the villagers are like, oh, uh, one one of the village women are like, oh, you please stay here or, or take me with you so you can teach me how to fight, and Nia's like, no, you need to stay here. You're the future of this village, and I hope I'm the past. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You're like 17 or however old you are. And also, like, if they don't learn how to fight the cyborgs, they're all going to die or get captured anyways. Mm, but yeah, then they ride off. <laughs> and, then, and then that wonderful narration happens. <laughs> ah, it's, it's a very stupid movie. <laughs> Really oh, and I forgot to mention it, but every single cyborg has uh, a small crucifix that looks like it's supposed to be screwed into their forehead, just in the middle of their forehead. Yeah. And it's just slightly askew for all of them. Yeah. It's not always there. Like, whenever they're wearing their, um, their like, battle dress, I don't think it's yeah. there. Because otherwise, it would be a very easy flashing weak point. <laughs> like, literally anyone to be like, why do they all have those crosses on their heads? Enough of them do that I noticed it. Yeah. I so. I couldn't figure out if it was, like, a ceremonial thing. Because they definitely have it during the parts where they're, like, 
walking around talking to each other, but most of the rest of the time they they just have like headbands on. Yeah, kind of hood hood esque mm-hmm. garments. But their costumes are like really elaborate. They are like <laughs> Lance Hendrickson has these goofy shoulder pauldrons with like a bazillion spikes and these <laughs> shutter shades. Oh yeah, the, got the easy shades on like half of the movie. <laughs> It's, it's so good. I genuinely love this movie because it's so <laughs> terrible. We've watched films in the past that were hard recommendations, right? Like, yeah. they're like, uh, I guess you could watch this if you're bored and maybe high or drunk. But I think this one is just genuinely a good time. As long as you're not yeah. expecting a good movie, but you're expecting a fun one, this takes that off that box. This is definitely uh, have your friends over, big bowl of pretzels, watch a stupid movie. Mm -hmm. Good time. Yeah. If you want to play the cyborg drinking game, just take a shot every time uh, someone gets stabbed in the forehead. Yeah. Uh, Or someone says robot when they mean cyborgs. (laughs) Oh, God, you'd be so dead by that. (laughs) The best thing about this is that it, like, reminded me about Kathy Long and her career. She did other, like, films and stuff as well yeah she did a lot this was actually her first movie Mm -hmm. do she there's one where she's actually the main character and she pulls a um a pale writer she was in natural born killers that's right and uh romey and michelle's high school reunion what she gets to play a lot of like kickboxing (laughs) instructors or people kicking (laughs) well she was michelle pfeiffer's stunt double in batman returns somehow that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, there's a movie called The Stranger. I don't, I've never seen it, so I can't speak to it. But the plot is basically Pale Rider, but it's a biker gang. And instead of Clint Eastwood, it's uh, Kathy Long. That's pretty dope. Yeah. So I heartily recommend this movie if you enjoy goofy 90s sci-fi action, uh, muscular ladies just punching people. <laughs> the weirdest lines ever written. <laughs> some really really choice good bad lines yeah like uh or even if you just love lance henriksen and i do i know i do i love lance henriksen like i painted a portrait of him at one point <laughs> <laughs> and when you mentioned this to me i could have sworn he was in more movies as a vampire but he was actually only in one other movie as a vampire and that was near dark mm-hmm. oh did you catch at the beginning where he's like, oh, you pumpkin heads. I think I remember him saying that, but I didn't make that connection. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they just snuck that in uh, just for him because I honestly wonder how much of this movie he ad-libbed because it seems like he probably ad-libbed a lot. I would be surprised if they like just gave him like a card like this is the gist of what you're getting across just get there here's the end point get there however you want to yeah find your own path yeah some someday we need to just like have a sit down and gush about how amazing lance hendrickson is because he is legit one of my favorite actors and definitely his whole story of coming up into acting and like then having the career he has being a potter all of these things he's an amazing guy definitely that was nights nice <laughs> um kate where can people find you on the internet you can find me on twitter and maybe tiktok as army of meat and where can people find you sky uh you can find me at shard underscore corso on twitter and that's s-h-a-r-d underscore c-o-r-s-o if you have any suggestions for the show you can drop them at at interesting choice six that's i-n-t-r-e-s-t-i-n-g-c-h-o-i six and also we're now on spreaker you can find us by going to spreaker.com slash show slash interesting dash choices or just search for interesting choices on spreaker and Thank you for joining us on this adventure across time and space. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next episode. All right. Bye. Bye.